Hello, uh, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mrs. Frances Onakudulora. Uh, this channel will be mostly about uh, chemistry, teaching of uh, chemistry, and content in chemistry. Yeah, and our locational family matters as they arise. Please, if you are just uh, joining this uh, channel, do well to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. After that, press the notification button so you can get the uh, you'll be able to get notifications whenever I post uh, any new content. So once again, welcome. Uh, today is chemistry part one and what we are going to discuss today is matter matter yeah matter is uh, anything that has weight and occupies space so that means that i am matter you are matter anything around us is matter this phone is matter this book is matter hanky is matter eh is matter because it has weight and occupies space everything around us is matter because everything around us has weight and occupies space even a simple small pin has weight and occupies space so it is matter so and examples of matter just like i have told you everything around us plants animals air human beings water food it is anything around us is matter uh, the mass the mass the mass of an object is the quantity of matter that object contains the mass of an object is the quantity of matter that object contains and the, the SI unit for measurement of matter is mole now from there we now move the properties of matter now how do you identify properties of a substance most substances are identified by the characteristics they possess. That is how we get the properties of substances. The characteristics that they possess. For example, sugar. We all know that sugar is white. It is soluble in any solvent. Be it water, be it an, an anything, any solvent, so sugar is soluble in it. And it is, we all know that sugar is sweet. So these are the things you can call the properties of sugar. White, soluble, and uh, sweet. You know, so these are the properties of sugar. So any substance is identified. The properties of any substance is that they are is identified by the characteristics of that uh, substance. For example, iron now. Iron. Iron is hard. You know, iron is hard. That is the property of uh, iron. It is hard. Sometimes you have black iron. Sometimes you have silvery looking iron. You know, so it depends on the color of which one you are identifying. You know, so that is how we get the properties of a, a substance by identifying the characteristics that those substances possess. Now, this matter, properties of matter, they are divided into physical and the chemical properties physical and chemical properties now the physical properties are those properties associated with physical changes you know physical changes which are those changes that are easily what reversible so physical properties are those associated with physical and um, changes for example they are boiling point melting point density hardness malleability that is being able to change a shape of something into another shape that is what is called what is meant by malleable something being malleable you know crystalline form color odor taste all these are physical properties the one we can identify by just looking at them seeing them feeling them sm smelling them you know these are how we identify the physical properties you don't need to go to any other 
an extraordinary length in order to identify the property. Just by looking at that property, you already know, looking at that uh, pro and substance, you already know the physical properties of them. Now, the chemical properties are those which are involved when matter undergoes a change to form a new substance. They are involved when matter when matter undergoes change to form a new substance. So we can say that the chemical properties are those associated with chemical changes because these are changes that are irreversible where matter forms a completely new substance which cannot be reversed to the original substance. For example, we have the boiling, the cooking, the heating. Well, you know, once heat is involved in any activity, that then has become a chemical change. It will be very, very difficult to reverse it back to the original state. So most chemical substances are associated with heat. They are associated with heat. Then, matter now undergoes physical and chemical changes. Physical and chemical changes. Matter undergoes physical and chemical changes. A physical change is one which is easily reversible and no new substance is formed. It is easily reversible, no new substance is formed. That is one that is called a physical change. For example, salt solution. When you mix salt and water and they form salt solution, you can reverse it back to the original state through evaporation. When you evaporate that salt solution, it now separates, you separate the water and then the salt and it goes back to its original state. So mixing it is a forward reaction and then the reversible reaction is a evaporation. That's an example of a physical change. Other physical changes include changes in the state of matter. For example, for example, melting. Where you melt solid to liquid, you can also freeze back that liquid to solid. So melting of solid to liquid, freezing of liquid to solid, vaporization, vaporization. When you vaporize liquid to gas, this normally occurs when water is boiling, when you evaporate liquid to gas. So vaporization is also a physical change. For to bring it back to liquid stage, you condense, you condense back the gas, it goes back to liquid state. We have the liquefaction of gases to liquids. You liquefy gas to liquid. When that vapor has been vaporized, when liquid has been changed to gas, you now liquefy it again, it comes back to, for it changes back from liquid to gas. We also have sublimation of solid to gas. You know, sublimation is a process whereby solid changes directly to vapor or gas. So we also have sublimation. So these are examples of physical changes. Melting of solid to liquid, freezing of liquid to solid, vaporization of liquid to gas, liquefaction or condensation of gas back to liquid, then sublimation of liquid to vapor. We also have separation of mixtures as examples of physical changes, separation of uh, mixtures. For example, evaporization, sorry, evaporation, evaporation, distillation, fractional distillation, sublimation, crystallization. These are all methods of separating mixtures, but they will not be discussed in this particular topic. Maybe a next topic. Then we have the magnetization and demagnetization of iron rods or nails. Magnetization and demagnetization of uh, 
iron rods or nails. These are all examples of what? Physical changes. Changes where you can easily reverse back to the original state. Then we come to chemical changes. These are changes which are irreversible. They are irreversible. They can the new substance is entirely formed, which cannot easily be reversed back to the original state. For example, we have firewood. When you burn firewood, firewood turns to ash. Heat, of course, is involved in the burning of the firewood. Like I told you earlier on, chemical changes involve heat. And once heat is involved in any change, it is very difficult to reverse it back. It cannot even reverse back. So when firewood burns, it changes towards ash. It turns to ash. There's no way you can turn ash back to that firewood. The same thing with paper. When you burn paper, paper changes to ash, turns to ash. It's, there's no way, no magic you perform you. There's no magic you can perform to change that ash back to paper. So these are the chemical changes. We have so they involve burning, the solution of metals and limestone in acid. You know, acid is also a chemical substance that burns. So when you dissolve metals and limestone in acid, it turns to a, it becomes an entirely new substance and cannot go back again to metal or limestone. Rusting of iron is a chemical change. When iron, you know how iron, original new iron, you know how smooth, how shiny, how attractive it looks. Now, when rusting occurs, rusting, of course, it involves heat. Heat must be involved. It involves what? Heat and the water. Heat and water. So when that happens, when rusting occurs, the iron is no more attractive. It becomes brownish, old, very unattractive. Now, there's no way you can change that rusting back to the original state. No matter how you try to change it, you can never go back to that original state. That's an example of chemical change. Then we have addition of water to quick lime. In other words, slaking of uh, lime. It also involves heat. When that happens, an entirely new substance is uh, formed. Quick lime is CaO, calcium oxide. When you add water to calcium oxide, it forms calcium hydroxide. An entirely new substance. Fermentation and decay of substances. When things ferment, you know, it starts giving off unpleasant odor. Or when things decay, they start giving off unpleasant odor. Something has happened there. Chemical change has happened. And they cannot go back again to the original state. For example, when you cook soup and soup gets far, you cannot go back to how, no matter how you try to cook that, warm that soup again, you can never go back to that sweet taste it had before or that sweet smell it had before. This, the odor changes and the taste changes. It has decayed, it has fermented. Chemical change has occurred. This changes in electrochemical cells. These are also chemical changes. So all these are examples of what chemical changes which cannot go back again to their to the original state. Burning, dissolution of metals and limestone in acid, rusting of iron, addition of water to quick lime. In other words, you can call it slaking of lime. Fermentation and decay of substances, changes in electrochemical cells. So I'll just go through the topic again. So you on you just a kind of um, a summary of it all. So in this um, topic, we have discussed matter, saying that matter is anything that has weight and occupies space, and we gave examples of matter as every, anything around us that has weight and occupies space, which means practically everything is matter. You know, we have, we gave properties of matter and um, which we have physical properties and we have the chemical properties. And we said the physical properties are those which are associated with what physical changes. Why the chemical properties are those associated with, with what chemical 
changes where a new substance is formed. Then we have the talked about physical and chemical changes. We have physical changes, a substance which, which is easily reversible and which in which no new substance is formed. We also gave some examples of physical changes like um, melting of solids to liquid, freezing of liquid to solids, uh, vaporization of liquid to gases, liquefaction of gases to liquids, sublimation of solids to gases, separation of mixtures, magnetization and demagnetization. And then we also talked about chemical changes, which is a change which is in which and which is not easily reversible and an entirely new substance is formed. Example, burning of firewood, in fire, wire firewood, and dissolution of uh, metals and limestone, as the rusting of iron, fermentation and decay, changes of changes in electrochemical cells. So with this, we have come to the end of this particular topic. Watch out for the next topic. If you have any questions, you can ask them on the, the comment box. Thank you.